What's going on everybody? Adam here with the trailer Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Buyers Products backup alarm. So if you have a bigger vehicle, whether you're doing it for you or for your business, it's always smart to have a backup alarm just to prevent any backovers. And so everybody in the warehouse or wherever you are, are gonna be a lot more safe. This is OSHA approved. So it is going to keep you within the legal bounds of what you need to have on your vehicle. So I'm gonna have Brad put it in reverse and we can see exactly how it works. Plenty loud. It is not gonna be an adjustable volume backup alarm. We do have some on our website, so if you like that idea, you can go ahead and grab that. This one's a little bit more compact, which I like, but you can't adjust the sound. It does have a nice construction to it, so it is going to resist against rust and corrosion whenever it's out in the elements, which is always a plus. It's gonna be available to work with your 12 or your 24 volt DC systems. It's gonna work in the extreme colds down to negative 22 Fahrenheit and all the way up to 122 Fahrenheit. So it's gonna work regardless of where you may be. It puts out about 107 decibels and the overall dimensions, it's gonna be about two and three quarters of an inch tall. It's gonna be about an inch and nine sixteenths wide and then it's gonna be three and seven eighths inches long. The mounting holes are gonna be three and a quarter inches on center. And this is just a nice compact unit that's not really gonna take up a whole lot of space, but really get a lot of sound out there. So if you have a lot of workers with some earplugs in, they'll be able to hear it no problem. If I were to add something, obviously you're gonna to need to get your wire. You can get some loom from us too, and also the terminal to connect it. And of course your hardware, but it would be kind of effective to get a nice LED strip in the back to kind of make some flashing something. So it's not just audible, but it's also visual. A lot of you were wondering if it's gonna work with your vehicle. So literally the only thing you need to do is just find the wire that is feeding power to your reverse light. You're gonna have a reverse light on your vehicle. So what we did was we found it, we spliced into it, and then we wired it down here. So if you stick around, we're gonna show you how we did this. And it's basically gonna be the same for your vehicle. First step is finding the reverse light wire. So a way to do that is to have somebody go into the cab. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tester and then just check for the wire that has the reverse circuit on. So Brad, you put it in reverse real quick. All right, so that is good. So we know that is the circuit that we want. We already ran this wire. So basically what you can do is you can take the wire that runs to your reverse lights. You can cut it in half and then you can take another wire and twist that together with one side, put it in here, clamp it down, and then take the other to complete the circuit again. So you have two coming off this way. One goes to here, the other one goes to where it was before, and then the other one's just coming from the body harness. So that's what we did and you can have it right here. So now we can go ahead and start mounting it up. I actually already have the holes drilled out. So you are gonna need to provide your own hardware. I'm just using self tappers and a washer. So we can go ahead, put that in there. Of course, you're gonna need the tool to do it. Once we kind of get it to where we want, put it in there. You want it pretty tight because this is gonna ground it as you can see here and but we don't want to go too tight and crack the housing so the same exact thing on the other side and that is good for that the nice thing about it is we do have elongated holes so as you can see it's a little crooked so i can kind of slide that back just a little bit get it a little bit more square so we're good there. We already have ground taken care of right here. So now all we need to do is we can take our little washers there. We can put one down. We're gonna put the terminal, the ring terminal over top of this. And the ring terminal does not come with the kit, but we do have some here at E-Trailer that you can pick up and neither does the wire, but again, it's a one-stop shop here at E-Trailer, so you can just grab that 
whenever you grab this. And then these do come with the kit, just the little nuts and uh, washers. And I'm gonna be using a seven mil to tighten this up. And once that is tight, we wanna make sure it's not gonna be touching our negative terminal there. Once that's on there, let's go ahead and see if it works. All righty, yeah. got our driver, put it in reverse, Brad. As you can hear, it's extremely loud. I can hear it from way up there, and everybody in the shop can hear it too. We have a lot of different backup alarms here at E-Trailer besides the one we just showed you, so we laid them all out, and we're gonna do a sound test here. So we have all of them laid out, and over here, we're gonna have a little gauge. So as you can see, once I start talking real loud, it goes up. And when I stop, it goes back down. So this is gonna give us an idea of exactly how accurate the decibel ratings are and see which one's the loudest. First one up on our list is gonna be the Buyer's Products Backup Alarm. And this one is supposed to do 102 decibels. So we got some wires ran and we're rigging this up so we can get it to work on the table here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the wires in place just like that let's see exactly how loud it actually is all right here goes the test so about 96 97 decibels and it is a little far away so right here it's probably going to be around that 102 decibel mark which is exactly what it says so Let's move on to the next. This one's gonna be a little bit louder, 107 apparently. Again, buyer's products. And we're going to connect it up. All right, test number two. So we're peeking out about 95, which is kind of the same as the other one. It does have a little bit different tone, so that might have something to do with it. And also we do have it a little farther away, but it is still within that range in the same ballpark. And that's what we're kind of looking for here. So moving up, we're gonna go with the Palak backup alarm. So this one is gonna be about 107 decibels. So let's test it out and see if that's what it is. Testing. Again, kind of going around that 95 decibel range, but again, it's just an app on one of our iPads we keep here in the shop, but it still is pretty loud. But all in all, it's around the same. We're looking at maybe about eight decibels of difference from what it says and what our gauge is telling us. Now for the Custer backup alarm. Let's go ahead and hook it up. Testing. So not as loud as some of the others that we had. About 83 is what we're getting with that. And this one's supposed to be 97, so it's within the range. And now for our Peterson backup alarms, it's gonna be about 112 decibels, so it should be a little bit louder than the others. It's reading about 95, but that was a lot louder. I think it's because of the little projection that they have in the molding, but this one definitely seems louder, even though it is reading about the same from all of our others. But let's move on. So now, we're gonna go with the Palak, and this one's gonna have different settings. So at its highest setting, it's supposed to be around 112, so let's see if it's any louder than this one. Testing. Again, about 97, but this one definitely is a lot louder. So I think usually, when the housing's a little bit bigger, it kind of projects that sound a little bit more and makes it a little bit louder. 
Out of all the ones we tested today, the one I would go with is the Pollock. So this one is my favorite just because we are gonna have adjustments on the side for the decibel output. I added on the 112, but we can make it go to 97 or 107. So this is gonna be adjustable and it's extremely heavy duty. It does feel a lot more solid than some of the smaller ones. And typically these are gonna go on larger vehicles. So it being compact isn't really a big deal for me. And if you do want a smaller one, the buyer's product is gonna be a nice compact little unit. And this is gonna be a little bit easier to find a place to put it. And that'll do it for a look at the buyer's product backup alarm. And I'm Adam with E-Trailer.